When you know God in the fellowship of his suffering, like the scripture says, then you're going to know him in the power of his resurrection. You may be in Gethsemane now. God's been good to you. You've seen his blessing, but you're in a time of pressing, squeezing. It's uncomfortable. People have come against you, straining your finances. A child has an illness. You're on a road that you didn't choose, facing things you don't understand. God sees what you're dealing with. He knows who did you wrong, what wasn't fair. When he's not removing the pressure, that means you have the grace to withstand. What do you fear most in life? Ill health? Some financial loss? Loss of a loved one? What do you fear most? Is it death? Or maybe failure in some particular area of your life? We probably all have areas that we have to deal with. Probably have to find ourselves talking to God about them several times, many times, sometimes, whatever it might be, it may be every day. But what are you afraid of? What really haunts you? Well, if you have courage, you can handle anything that haunts you. Be strong. Not fearful, be strong and courageous. We have a choice of facing the difficulties we face in life in one of two ways. We can do it courageously or we can do it fearfully. And God doesn't want his people living fearfully. He says, I have not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God wants us to be triumphant. He wants us to be courageous and bold, whatever we face in life. And he's made promises to make it possible for us to face anything and everything and still be standing when the battle is over. Life expands or shrinks in proportion to your courage. Many, many great things have begun with a single act of courage throughout history and today. A person steps out and makes one courageous decision and that one domino starts many other dominoes following. Stanley said, this is my friend Andy, we have to step out and take the first step. And we may never know the ripple effect that that one courageous decision. Catalyst leaders, your decision is to do something courageous and it may result in something greater than you ever imagined. Step out. Courage is not waiting for your fear to go away. We know this. We know this at the gut level, but many times fear still holds us back. Fear usually is connected to the uncertainty about the future, but uncertainty about the future is never going to go away. I tell leaders all the time, uncertainty is why they are leaders. Uncertainty gives you job security. Whenever there's uncertainty, there will always be a need for leaders, which means always stepping out in the unknown, which always requires courage. I love this statement. Courage was like moving the dominoes. And I run people there. They say, well, I'm not certain about it. Can you just, leaders are always uncertain. We're never sure, but that doesn't eliminate courage. It's courage that gets people to move, not certainty. Courage is living one's convictions in the face of fear. Fear, it can be a speed bump, but it shouldn't be a stop sign. The Bible never says that courage and fear are mutually exclusive. In fact, the most courageous acts take place despite fear. The book of Hebrews expresses this quite graphically. Stand firm on your shaky legs. I love that, huh? Those who follow will become strong. In San Diego, every year I would take my staff on a retreat, and every year I would do this exercise with them. New staff members that had come on during that year, I would give them the plaque, and the plaque would say, I don't have to survive. And I would tell new staff members, you're on staff not to play it safe. You don't have to survive here. You don't even have to live. But be courageous that we have fear and we have faith, and the stronger emotion will always win. If my faith is stronger than my fear, which is positive, then I'll do the things that faith requires. If my fear is stronger than my faith, I'll always do the things that fear requires. You've got to feed your faith. You've got to starve your fear. This is one of my favorite leadership quotes by Nelson Mandela. 
Nelson Mandela said, during my lifetime, I've dedicated my life to the struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I fought against black domination. I've cherished the ideal of a democratic and free society in which all people live together in harmony and have equal opportunities. It's an ideal which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, he's talking to the judge. If it needs be, it's an idea which I am prepared to die. Courage is the door that can only be opened from the inside. Someone on the outside can't do this for you. You gotta open it from the inside. This means only you can do it. And you can do it. You have to take chances in life. If you don't take chances in life, you'll never have the life God has for you. Life is about risk. If you play it safe in life, you ain't going to have much of a life. If you play it safe, you won't have much of a life. Life is risk. It take, it take courage to pursue your dream. I just did it. It cost me everything. But eventually, God is very good, man, when he sees you take a leap of faith. He supplies you everything you need. Now, it's going to cost you something. But most people, most people, most people are not willing to pay what it costs to go after your dream because you're going to have to hurt a little bit. And most people don't like being uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, please do not pursue success because success is a very uncomfortable feeling. And I just learned to be, I learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. If you can get that in your head, this too shall pass. Every moment of un everything you've ever gone through, God got you through it. You didn't even realize it. He just got you through it. You can't name one thing he didn't pull you through. Well, I lost my mother. I'm still grieving over that. I lost my mama 21 years ago. I still grieve over it, but I'm here. You know, you I got through it. You're going to get through it. But you got to take chance in life, man. Can't play it safe, y'all. You got to jump. You got to go for it. You've lived a life dominated by doubt and fear. How do you step into bravery? Step. That, that's how you step into bravery. Step. Take the step. Step aggressively towards your fear. And that, that step towards your fear is the step into bravery. Because we, we're, we're scared of what we don't know. And there is only one way to learn and to know, and that is to confront that fear. You have to step. You have to go. And this simple action, this simple attitude, it answers so many questions. So many questions. How, how do you get to the gym every day? You step. You go. How do you, how do you change your diet? You step, you go. How do you overcome fear of failure or fear of success or, or fear of fear itself? You step. And how do you face the fear of the unknown? You step. Don't wait anymore. Don't think anymore. Don't plan anymore. Don't contemplate anymore. Don't make any more excuses or justifications. Don't rationalize anything else. No. No and no. Instead, be aggressive. Take action now. And what is the first action that you need to take? What's the first step you need to take? The first step you need to take is just that step. You know, the pressures on us are overwhelming from Wall Street or our own egos or from internal incentive structures or our bosses, whatever it is. The pressures are overwhelming for us to play the finite game. And so how do you stand up to massive external pressure? Courage. And courage is something that comes from relationships. You know, it's external. A, 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 a world-famous trapeze artist would never attempt a brand new death-defying act for the first time without a net. They would never do it. So why do we think that we could do something difficult without external support too? Um, I've had the opportunity to meet real heroes, people who've risked their lives to save the lives of others with the belief that they were going to die, and they didn't. 
And when asked, why did you do it? They all say something similar, which is they would have done it for me. It's external. And so we have to have, we have to take the time to foster and take care of people around us, to nurture our relationships, because when we're going to be doing something difficult, when we're going to be swimming upstream, when we're going to be innovating and doing something different, there are days we're going to doubt ourselves. There are days we're going to get knocked in our ass. There are days that storms are going to rise. And we have to have people who say, I got your back. You need to do this. We need you. The world needs this. Keep going. I believe in you, you know? Um, and so courage, courage comes from, from not only our willingness to do that for others, but then their willingness to do it for us. And if we commit ourselves to a just cause and we're willing to, to do those things, then, you know, the great thing is we take a lot of people with us and change the world for the better. And isn't that sort of the, the point of an infinite life? To leave this world in better shape than we found it, to leave the companies that we work for in better shape than when we started, to leave our families stronger and better capable than, than they can do without us. You know, isn't, isn't that what it means to live an infinite life? That we can live, literally live on beyond our own lives. As a follower of Jesus Christ, giving up is not who we are. Surrendering is not who we are. Throwing in the towel as we say, that's not who we are. A lot of us are afraid that we are not enough that we don't have what it takes. So, so what kind of fortitude, what kind of grit might arise from a certainty, a confidence that God was with us? As a follower of Jesus Christ, we have the right to expect the best from him. He has the right to expect the best from us. And so when I think about giving up, that just, it doesn't fit who we are. We love courage, don't we? We love stories of courage. We love people who are courageous. We celebrate them. We want to be like them. But if we're honest with ourselves, most of us are anything but courageous, aren't we? Whatever the situation may be, before you give up, you stop and ask yourself the question, does this fit who I am as a follower of Jesus? And this message is all about keeping on, keeping on. And that is to have the courage to keep on keeping on. And if you will listen carefully and apply these points that I'm going to lay out before you, you don't have to give up and quit. There is an answer and a solution to what God wants to do in your life at this point, no matter what it is. He's with us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Strength and courage, my, my brothers and sisters, are not found within you. They are found in knowing that God is with you. What would I do tomorrow if I was certain God was with me? What's that thing that's just sitting in your gut right now that you know you need to do, but you're hesitant, that if you knew you were certain that God was with you, do? And maybe it's not tomorrow. Maybe it's like right now. Maybe it's right after the service. Maybe it's today. What would I do today? What would I do now? What would I do immediately if I was absolutely certain that God was with me? The basis of our courage is not how strong I am. The basis of our courage is God. God is the ultimate one who determines our life and how we face the circumstances of life. Many of God's people live in utter defeat as they face their daily work in life because they won't believe what God said. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, neither be that as made. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You know what, what it's called when you're scared to death to do something and you do it anyway? That's called courage. If you're not afraid, you're not courageous. Only people who are afraid are courageous. If you're not afraid, you're not courageous. You don't need any courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is doing the right thing in spite of your fear. When we get in over our heads, there is a reminder that He is there. You know, the most frequent command in all the Bible, it's a two-part. It goes, do not fear, for I am with you. That command, do not fear, for I am with you, at least 366 variations of that in the Bible. Why? Because we need a constant reminder that God is present with us because we get fearful and we get scared and we start to feel like we're alone. And God says, no, 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 I'm right here with you. Keep going, I'm right here with you. We need that constant reminder of, of, of God's presence with us. 
If you're going to have courage in your life, and you're going to understand that God is working in your life, you've got to be in the Word. This is, this is the mind of God. This is the heart of God. This is the Spirit of God. They, they, here's, here's where we find all the gifts of God, what God is up to in your life. If I neglect the Word of God and neglect spending time with Him, I'm not going to be strong. It's the Word of God because as I read what He says, going through some difficult time and thinking, God, forget it. And I come to this verse, He says, God causes all these things to work together for good because I have called you, then I, can, I don't have to give up. Why? I know that whatever I'm facing... As tough as it is, my God, because he's always truthful, he's going to turn it for my good. There's some things I cannot figure out how God turns for good, but he does. He never said, understand me. He said, trust me. Just trust me. And that is the key. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God goes with you wherever you go. God is saying you can have courage because my presence is with you. My presence will go with you. You're not alone. The creator of the universe who sits enthroned in the heavens is with you. He not only sends you, but then he goes around, turns around and goes with you.